Welcome to a new video on my channel, hope you're doing fine. Today I want to give you an update about Proterra and its latest Q3 earnings. As you can see over here, the company posted a record revenue for the quarter of 96 million US dollars, which is up more than 50% year over year and uh, almost 30% quarter over quarter. So this is definitely uh, really, really good result concerning the revenue and I think this is the most important part right now for the company. So they they are ramping up production, getting up to scale and then have hopefully a lot of revenue in the future. Um, the company also produced a record revenue for the Proterra power and energy segment but I will come back to this later on. So basically record in transit buses, record in um, the megawatts they have been installed during the charging solutions and also for the whole segment Proterra powered and energy. As you can see over here in the overview, um, the company was pretty well on all metrics except for the net loss, which has been increased in comparison to the last quarter. So this is something to keep in mind. The company is still not profitable and therefore it's important to have a look at the cash at hand or at balance sheet right now, especially in this condition screen right now. Here's the overview about the whole development and you can pause and, and have a look in detail if you want. Otherwise, we'll jump over to the next slide, which is the years 2021 and 2022 only to give you a little bit more or better overview. And as you can see over here, the company delivered 60 new electric transit buses, which is a record right now. And they also additionally delivered five pre-owned buses in the quarter. Revenue grew 12% Q or Q and um, is a record of 56.4 million right now. And which I think is remarkable is that they on the one hand have existing customers which have renewed orders and also a lot of new customers. So this is also good to on the one hand have new orders coming in and also have satisfied customers so that they will be coming back with more, hopefully, um, orders in different segments of the company. So this looks definitely good, especially um, that they could ramp up at least yeah, a little bit in comparison to the last quarter for the uh, deliveries. However, unfortunately, the revenue went down. As you can see over here, I think the, the prices have been lower than they were before. And one thing is also the, the price increase, which has not been um, given through to the customer, since there has been a lot of uh, legacy deliveries, which uh, has been the prices for the inflation. And therefore, the, the margin improvements should come in the Q4 of 2024, uh, 2022, so something to keep in mind for the future. Now to the segment um, powered and energy, as you can see over here, the, the orange bar shows the battery system which they produced in this quarter and this has been declining and almost 16% uh, quarter over quarter, however, still a huge growth year over year. Um, yeah, I would really be interesting to see why this is the case. And uh, I would have hoped that the numbers would have increased in comparison to the last quarter. So something to have a look at the conference call. Unfortunately, I could not attend it right now. So I will hopefully have the chance to listen to it tomorrow or in a few days. And then if I have any feedback, I will come back maybe with an anonymous comment or maybe a, an additional video. On the contrast, all the other segments of the power and energy has been really, really good. You can see over here, revenue, uh, the megawatt charging infrastructure installed has been 22.5 megawatt, which is a lot higher than the last few quarters. And definitely a good sign. On the one hand, they also have the, or they gave the information that they have been 23 different customers during this quarter, which is a good sign that there are a lot of different um, companies having these orders. 
and these orders included three of them megawatt scale fleet chargers. So this is not only small part but also bigger part and uh, yeah, this shows that there will be adaption or at least partially adapt adaption which then would be definitely a positive sign for the future. And also something to keep in mind is they delivered a 9 megawatt only to their largest transit bus project. So this should then mean that in the future the uh, project should also be increasing, which then in turn also increase the revenue. Uh, something I have to add, um, the decrease in the numbers of the battery systems um, installed has been uh, also addressed in the the letter. Unfortunately, I could uh, I, I didn't see it before. They said that this is due to the greater mix of shipments of vehicles with larger batteries, and therefore it makes sense that they couldn't install more because if they are uh, larger, on the one hand, it takes a lot more time, and on the other hand, it's also more time consuming to um, general build these systems. So it's it's not as bad as I thought before, but something to keep an eye on. And as you can see over here, it's the fourth uh, record quarter in, in a row. And this is uh, really a positive sign for this. Now let's dig into this a little bit deeper. As you can see over here, the total amount of revenue of the power and energy system segment has been 42%, which is also a record high. And this is also a good sign, in my opinion, that the company is focusing on the batteries right now, since they're easier to scale, uh, especially if you have a look at what the company is going to do or is planning to do with the extension of the powered one plant in Korea, but this is something uh, for later. And as we can see over here, also battery production is increasing. So this is, I think, the most important part. Uh, and then in comparison with the battery systems installed, because if you have a look what the total amount of battery production is and then divide it in the um, battery productions, uh, battery systems installed, then you have an overview of how large are the systems. And uh, yeah, this paints the picture, even though that they have record battery production, they have less battery system, which means they have to be higher. And this is also what they addressed in the, in the quarter ladder, which definitely makes a lot of sense. As I mentioned in the beginning, also something to have an eye on is the cash amount, especially if the company is losing a lot of cash. And as you can see over here, QRQ, they lost uh, 114 million US dollars and still have a little bit more than 400 million US dollars left. So this is uh, yeah, a little warning sign that there will most likely be dilution in some kind in the future. Uh, since they have cash for around one to maybe two years left and uh, yeah, they will have to refinance in any way, but this is something to be seen. Now let's have a look at the guidance and the comparison to their projections. As you can see over here, they gave an uh, update about their guidance. They reaffirmed the guidance of between 300 and 325 million of revenue for the fiscal year. However, this um, guidance already include the fewer working days for the last quarter due to uh, holidays and also the downtown for inventory counting on in, the, yeah, in December. So I think otherwise they might have um, increased the revenue. I'm not really sure, but this is just my guess. So what about the guidance? Is it realistic? In my opinion, it definitely is. As you can see over here, the company posted around 230 million of revenue in their first nine months, which means that on average, they have a revenue of 25.5 million. And if you scale this then up for the last three months, this would be um, 76.5 million US dollars. And this would then lead to 306.5 million US dollars. However, if you keep in mind that the last quarter has been a lot higher, then uh, you might get to an even higher number, even though that there are less working days than in the quarters before. So I think it's definitely achievable, achievable with average revenue. 
and um, yeah, this would be a read if they have the same revenue numbers as in Q3 of uh, 96 million. So then they would be around around 326 million. So yeah, maybe the surprise on the upside, and um, but I'm pretty confident that unless there has been a lot of disruption in these supply chains again, or even um, yeah further conflicts, um, then this will definitely be at least in line with their guidance. I also want to compare this with their initial investor presentation. As you can see over here, they projected to around 440 million of revenue for the fiscal year 2022. And this comprises 160 million of powered energy segment and 279 of the transit segment. And as you can see over here, they have right now 142.4 million for the transit in the first nine months, which then leads to around uh, 190 million at the same run rate, which is 68% of the projected number. And powered and energy looks a little bit better since they have around 72% um, at the same run rate. I expect this to be higher because the last quarter has been yeah, significantly be better than the first two. So that might be an improvement, but overall, I think yeah, there should be a, a rate of uh, achievement of around 70 to 75%. So I think all in all, this is still pretty good given the headwinds that the company had for, especially for the supply chain issues and resulting therefore in slower than initially projected increase of a second shift. But yeah, I think overall it's still, still pretty good what the company did. For the future, I think there are also regulatory tailwinds, which are the following three, which the company also lined out in their letter. On the one hand, the infrastructure bill, um, which has been awarded, awarded for the last few months and it's total of 1.3 billion US dollars. And the second part is the around 900 million US dollars, which are exclusively for the purchase of electric school buses, which has been uh, yeah, provided by the US Env Environmental Protection Agency. And these must be ordered by April 2023. So therefore, I think there will definitely be an increase in the uh, bookings and also in the backlog in the yeah, Q1 2023, I think. An additional positive part is the Inflation Reductions Act Clean Vehicle Credit, which starts in 2023, which will be up to 30% of the initial price for the class 4 to class 8 vehicle. So this is also definitely a good sign because and then the total cost of ownership has been reduced. And I think this is a yeah, way for a lot of customers to switch to electric. And this is something which uh, Proterra is definitely looking for and also I think is good for the company in total. And the last part I want to mention is the expansion and definitely the new battery factory in Greer which now has a name, which is call, called Part One, and it's still expected to be starting production in late 2022, and the ramp up is planned in 2023. So, positive sign that they are still on track, because um, I think, yeah, this part, they also have a lot of uh, tailwind given the production of batteries, which then also be subsidized, subsidized and also be uh, helpful to have a company like this in, in the US. Um, yeah. No uh, update for the second shifts. However, the uptake of the output, I think is positive, which then means that at least they are more productive or maybe also have a second shift. So something to have an eye on for the conference call, what they're saying about this. Supply chain also no update in Q3 presentation. However, the high out output, as I mentioned before, also for the second bus, uh, which uh, leads then that there has been lower um, problems, if at all, not really sure. And also the uh, measurements have seemed to work. On the one hand, the double 
Sublimin and also the uh, yeah overview about the different uh, critical components and then different arrangements they made over here. And lastly, uh, the inflation, the high mix of deliveries under pre-inflation pricing um, leads that the uh, Q3 margins has or didn't see any improvement. And uh, yeah, if you, if it's true what they said that they expect the margins to improve in the second quarter of 2022, then the positive influence should come in the last quarter of 2022. So something to keep an eye out in the next quarter. So to sum things up, I think the paths to consider for the future are still the same. And on the one hand, supply chain, just to see if part shortages continue or if they have uh, disappeared, which would definitely really, really good. And then if this is the case, they can also scale up, especially for the new shifts for the transit area and also the ramp up for the powered one factory, which I'm really looking forward, looking forward to because then the output of the batteries will be improved drastically. And yeah, I hope they can ramp up quickly. But yeah, this is something to be seen. Um, something which I'm critical of is the deployment of the cache and uh, development of the cache and cache equivalents because they are only having 400 million US dollars left, which will, in my opinion, unfortunately lead to a dilution in the future. And it will be interesting to see how they get new money in the future. And also the inflation part, impact on margins, decreasing right now. If the margins will be increasing in the future due to the adjusted pricing and if they have the ability to uh, increase the prices to the customers. I think positive definitely the old regulatory framework uh, with the new uh, grants and also which the, with the tax credits which I think will also help Utera to um, give the prices uh, or yeah, increase the prices at the customers. Yeah, and this was all. All in all, as I mentioned before, I think it was a good quarter. Um, definitely helpful uh, for the company to have record revenue. However, they are still operating at a loss. So, so, yeah, this is to be seen if they can ramp up and then maybe also decrease their net loss. So this would be definitely a positive sign. On the one hand, um, a bad sign would be if the revenue have or would be decreasing or not growing as fast as before and the net loss will be increasing so for this come for this quarter i think the problem was also that the other expenses like the general admission and uh, yeah all the other related parts have been increasing even higher than the revenue so this is also always a bad sign however maybe this is also helping in the future so this is something to be seen and uh, i'm really looking forward to next quarter especially after the start of part one and to see how the company will be doing in the future. So that's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video and would be interesting to hear what you think about the company and the development. Until next time, have a good day. Bye bye.